Do you think I'm talking evaporative bulls? No, I discuss biogas and dehumidification. Why biogas and dehumidification? In recent years, cogeneration applications for the production of thermal and electrical energy from renewable sources have developed significantly. One of these renewable sources comes from biogas. It is a very interesting application that often happens to us how to manage from a thermal point of view, especially for the dehumidification of biogas. That is, what happens to biogas is a natural element that usually derives from the decomposition of waste, animal excrement, and evidently it is a gas that is certainly a fuel but contains a lot of moisture inside. This moisture, if transported inside the engine, would damage it. What do we do as a result? It needs to be dehumidified. To dehumidify it, systems with refrigeration units and specially designed tubular bundle heat exchangers are used, which cool and dehumidify the biogas before sending it to the engine using a very cold glycol water mixture. You can see from this image a typical example of how a system is built. Usually very low temperature chillers are used, let's say close to freezing, temperature plus one or plus two degrees. Biogas from the digesters arrives at 35 to 45 degrees C and must be cooled to 4 to 5 degrees to reduce moisture and provide the engine with a low humidity level. Cooling is necessary to minimize moisture content in the gas and ensure a low absolute humidity level for the engine's fuel supply. Essentially, at the heat exchanger outlet, we'll have 100% relative humidity, but the absolute water content, the gas's humidity, will be very low. At the exit of the exchanger, typically, condensate separators are positioned, which are nothing more than large containers where this condensate is gathered and discharged and removed downstream. Additionally, filters are also placed to further filter this gas, which will then supply the valuable greetings to everyone in the downstream process.